All right, today I'm meeting up with my friend Jordan. We're in South Florida. We're gonna be radio tracking some Florida box turtles. Uh, really excited about this. This is gonna be um, something totally different. So follow along and we're gonna go see Jordan and he's gonna show us how it's done. <laughs> nice big burrow right there. So explain how the radio tracker works. Is there, I guess there's gotta be a physical device attached exactly. to the turtle. So we have these small little uh, transmitters. They're less than like 10 grams. So they're really light and they've got a battery that lasts for over 400 days. Um, so we can effectively, if we wanted to, come out here and track them every day for 400 days. It's a perpetual signal that's sort of fired and it matches up to a frequency on the receiver here. So, um, and I, I say this, Every time I talk to people about uh, radio telemetry, it's basically like playing advanced Marco Polo. Um, you know, they don't call back to you, but you do get a signal that beeps, and the louder that signal, the closer you are to the turtle. So as we're kind of walking through, you'll hear the signal get kind of louder and louder and louder. And when it gets loud enough, we know that animal is within like a five foot radius. We just gotta look around for it's it. It's kind of like the movie Aliens. Exactly. When they're in the ceiling. No, baby. <laughs> Game over, man. So that signal gets more clear. It'll get louder okay. and sort of more of a reverb as you get closer. They, they're usually, if they're buried, they're like half buried, but they like to get right up against the roots of the small pond. Okay. <laughs> the Florida box turtle. Oh, that. Just hanging out where she hangs out. I can pull her out. Let you do the honor. Bit. Step over here if you want. Flashed on. Yeah, that does look nice. So. Yeah, you got all get a little bit chewed up here. There's a fox. Mm -hmm. and several coyotes that live in this habitat um, and pretty much all of the dark box turtles have chew marks on them some way or shape or form but most of them uh, survive there's very little um, death rate in, in this population at least in the adults but these are our I was gonna say they're our mark, mark indicators yep on the marginal scoots so this is a uh, individual um, number six because that's scoot number two the scoot number four adds up to number six she also has the name of Valentine because she's got this little heart right here on her top carapace. <laughs> so, and this is what the transmitter looks like. Um, this whole setup is less than 20 grams. Is that like Bondo or this something? This is um, uh, JB Waterwell Epoxy. Okay. So it's uh, waterproof because, like I said, this area floods. Yeah. Um, in the wet season, these things are swimming. So we needed something that could protect the, um, the transmitter in the water. Right. Um, while not being too heavy and this right. stuff works really great it doesn't cause any sort of deleterious effect to the shell um, and we have to constantly check it because they shed it off occasionally mm -hmm. so and sometimes we just find a, a an empty transmitter with no turtle attached right. so um, it's a little you can see the colors are a little bit faded but we typically paint them as well just to kind of blend in with the surroundings right. um, they're typically a bright white but we don't want a big bright white exactly. thing popping out to uh, attract any predators or anything like that so our little lady valentine She's probably the biggest female out there. I was going to say, that's a pretty good size for, yeah. for that box. Turtle. Yeah, that she's, species of box turtle. Yeah, she, yeah the, the Bowerai down here are really interesting. Um, there are some giants down here. Uh, the, 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 the record uh, Florida box turtle was from Southwest Florida. Good size turtle. That's awesome. Yeah. Didn't take that long. No. So just watch your <laughs> step because there are little burrows. Just, Dude, is this just girl? spotted a box turtle with a radio transmitter. Without even having a tracker. Just Priscilla? That's who I was gonna track next, actually. This is actually the next turtle I was gonna track. Don't even have to do it. Yeah, this is Priscilla. Oh yeah, she's at, she's got the um kind of marginals around the head chewed off. Yeah, she she's she's been through some stuff. There's some definitely some older females out here that have seen some things. She's the first turtle we ever marked out here. Oh wow. And um, she's also the first turtle we ever radio tracked out here, which is really cool. Yeah. So she was not only marked first, then we got finding for radio tags. We popped those on her. And she is our, our resident of the prairie. She um, 
She lives in this open habitat year round. She's the only one that doesn't venture into the thick, dense stuff with the exception of the few little islands of it. Out so here. you are finding that they stick to a pretty tight home range? Well, inside here. Some of them do. Okay. We have, we have one that would live back there and then is actually living up at the very front of the place that you okay. were just at before and they go so there, back and forth. there are forth. no rules. Yeah, no rules. There's there's none of that, oh, they only have a, you know, a two mile yeah. home radius and that's the yeah. only place they live, you know. That um, is one thing I'd like to kind of dispel is yeah. that that's not always the it's case. It's not always the case. I mean, a lot of them do have really uh, high uh, home range fidelity. Like this girl, like she hasn't moved outside of like basically less than a quarter mile. Mm -hmm. um, but some of them, if they have the space, they would move miles and miles and miles most yeah. likely. So there's, it's, there's that kind of common uh, rule. Oh, hey, if I find a box turtle, you know, crossing the road um, and uh, there's no habitat around, if I take it somewhere else, it's definitely going to die. Not necessarily as long as you're not moving it like with, you know, 30 miles away. Especially when you see how faded her shell is, you know this turtle's been around for a while. I see. <laughs> Dude, that's so tiny. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't want to freak you out too much. Just gonna get a little shot because I don't want to scare him. Uh, comparatively, and here we go. We've got a female, and oh, is that a male? It's a male. But, and a juvenile, yeah. Pretty cool. See if we can find there's this one she's she looks so different than every other florida box turtle you've ever seen she's uh she's like completely flat almost oh. Yeah. He's the only one out here that's like this. Interesting. Yeah, I need to see her. Kind of strong. She's got some cool little chevron markings. Yeah. yeah, as of yesterday, she had two eggs. So. Oh, wow. That would be her third question. Did you x ray or you just palpate? Radiograph. Or? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Hopefully, she lays those eggs or already has. Yeah, she's already laid two clutches. So. Nice. Yeah, so this will be the third. <laughs> You can almost not even see them once they get into there. You can tell like... Yeah, that disruptive that, pattern. Yeah, that pattern just takes them away. Just breaks them up when that sunlight's coming through there. Organized chaos when you're tracking this. <laughs> oh, yep. See you. Yeah, she is kind of backed in. Yeah, if there's a possibility she's nesting, we'll just we'll kind of leave and, her where she is. And this would be huge for us um, because we're trying to do a uh, like a nesting um, site sort of preference study and look at like uh, how uh, canopy cover, light, and things like that affects where they place their nest. And we're trying to do that uh, in a collaboration with my, my uh, buddy up at USF, Sean Duty, to look at like uh, if there's like sort of a gradient as you go to mm -hmm. more northern latitudes, like are they sort of accounting for hotter temperature down here? Are they placing it yeah. in more covered canopy areas, different times of year? So there's, I think she's nesting. Oh, this is, 
freaking amazing. <laughs> So the last box turtle we tracked was actually laying eggs. So that was really cool. It was really awesome to get to see that. We didn't want to disturb her or pick her up or get too close with the camera. We just wanted her to be able to lay her eggs. So that's why we kind of uh, cut that part short. We, uh, we got to track a bunch of Florida box turtles, got to see some gopher tortoises, and then there was also little lizards and stuff scurrying around. So typical day in Florida, right? So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next Field Hurt Friday. Field Hurt Fridays are moving to every other Friday. And I'm thinking about in between doing feeding Fridays. Drop a comment below what you guys think of that idea, whether it's a good idea or whether you think it sucks. So just let me know and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.